So we finally have some 320 amp hour lithium iron phosphate cells. And the capacity of this whole pack is 16.38 kilowatt hours. And the total cost was $2,810. And that boils down to 17 cents per watt hour, by far the cheapest battery we have ever tested. But that does not include a BMS, and unfortunately, some of these cells are bloated, so we might not pull full capacity. But honestly, I do not want to go through the refund process and it took like three months to get these cells. So we're just gonna make do and build a pack and see what capacity we get. So if you're buying super, super cheap batteries, it's a good idea to add some extra cells to your order in case this happens because this happens a lot, especially when you find the cheapest listing on AliExpress, you're bound to get some bloated cells. Most of these are almost, if not always, grade B cells. One of my distributor friends told me that they will cycle these and then re-sleeve them and then sell them on AliExpress at a reduced capacity. And he said that that's very, very common. Almost every listing is like that. I chose these cells in particular because they have welded studs on the terminal. On most cells of this size, you'll get a threaded terminal, and it's very easy to strip that out, and I hate them so much. These cells also come with tinned copper bus bars and locking nuts. And this is much easier than making your own. I used to do that, but it takes a long time. So in this video, we're gonna build a 16S 48 volt battery, but unfortunately, there are lots of supply shortages, and I cannot get my hands on a 16S 48 volt BMS. So we're gonna use two 8S BMSs in series. So what that means is we're going to build a 24 volt pack with these first eight cells in one BMS and then a second 24 volt battery over here with these eight cells in another BMS. And then I'm going to put the two batteries in the series and then we're going to use it in my 48 volt solar power system. Now let's talk about compressing these cells. A lot of people when they see bloated cells, they want to just compress them and they think that it will fix the problem. Unfortunately, it's not that simple and if I were to compress these excessively after they've already already been bloated and that gas formation change has occurred inside with the electrolyte, I could cause an internal short. And personally, I'm not a big fan of compression unless I'm using pouch cells or very thin prismatic cells. And I know that on some data sheets, it states that you can milk out an additional thousand cycles down to 80% degradation if you were to compress them at a specified PSI. But in my opinion, that's entirely worthless because these are gonna last 3,000 to 5,000 cycles minimum when used for solar at low C rates. So by the time these hit 80%, I'm gonna be an old man. I really do not care about milking out another thousand cycles. And by that point, there's gonna be super cheap batteries or these batteries will be pennies on the dollars. So personally, it's not a big deal to me. I like to push these batteries to their thermal limit and I like to cycle them hard. And even when these batteries hit their cycle limit, you can still use them. It's not like a lead acid battery. At 5,000 or 10,000 cycles, you're gonna have reduced capacity but you can still use this pack. It's completely safe to do so. But it's smart to use some form of compression to hold the cells in place so there's not stress on the terminal. Now that is important to me. And we can easily accomplish this with capped on tape. So we're gonna strap these cells to each other, put the bus bars on, and then throw a BMS on it. Also, we're not gonna top balance this pack before I put it together because I wanna see if these pull full capacity at their arrived state of charge. Charge. So I want to cycle them once and test it and if they pull full capacity then I'm not going to top balance them at all. It's not a requirement. But if I don't pull full capacity and this sells at 50% and this is at 80% then I'm going to have to rip it apart and do a top balance or just let the BMS handle it. It might take like a month or two but it will top balance eventually. And check this out. These bus bars have room for expansion and contraction. I wonder if they did that on purpose because they know that these are bloated cells. That would be so funny. And I wanted to use double sided tape between these cells but they're so bloated that it would be useless. So let's hope that this tape can hold them together well enough. So it looks pretty awful, but it should work. This tape's like magic. This stuff holds really well. So maybe if these were grade A cells, I would spend more time doing this, but I simply don't care. These might not even pass the capacity test at all. So we're just gonna slap it together and see what happens. But the bus bars do fit nicely on the terminals. All of them have a lot of extra space. 
Now we need to add terminal connectors to the balance lead. And these channel lock crimpers are my favorite for small connectors like this. The crimp is perfect. And Klein strippers for small wires. So now the BMSs are ready for the install. These are very heavy, so I'm gonna move them into the battery case that I have next to my solar power system, slap a BMS on it, and then connect it to my system. But before we do that, we're gonna do a capacity test just to see what these actually pull. Because if these are really bad, then I'm gonna to have to take them apart, top balance them, try again, and then try to get some of my money back. But if they pull full capacity on the first cycle, then I'm just gonna slap the BMSs on them and then put them in my system. Now the battery is built and I wanna connect this charger, but before I connect the balance cable into the BMS, I always do a final check because if any of these wires are switched, then it could burn out my BMS. And there are supply shortages, so I really don't wanna screw this up. And we are good to go, so let's plug it in. Woo, that was a big spark. Usually it doesn't spark that big. That was kind of strange. Anyways, we'll come back in eight hours when this thing is fully charged and then do our test. And while the other one was charging, I built this pack and it's charging now as well. So now the battery is fully charged and I started the capacity test, but this should take around 16 hours. So I'll come back tomorrow and we'll have results. The test is finally done. We only pulled 285 amp hours. So we're missing a little over 500 watt hours. That is pretty unfortunate actually. Ah, oh, what a bummer. So we pulled 91% of its advertised capacity. And 91% of the total cost I paid with shipping means I lost about $250. But I'm wondering if the second pack has the same capacity. So we're gonna test that before we build anything further. And it is possible that these cells are not balanced but I'm just gonna run them for a month and then do a capacity test of the entire pack. And if I have better capacity, I'll let you guys know. But typically if these are tested and then matched, they should be at the same state of charge. And when they're not, it shows that the company is not doing their job properly. So I'm wondering if this tape actually causes too much compression because these cells have expanded quite a bit because they're fully charged. And look at the gap right here. But there's not much of a gap between these cells, but the expansion is occurring. So yeah, this tape might be doing too good of a job. It's even hard for me to put the bus bars on because they expanded so much. It's probably smart to retorque these after they have expanded. So then there's more space between the cells. Yeah, that actually helps. I just saw it expand right there. Now the balance lead is connected and I'm gonna retorque all of these. Now the test has started, so we'll come back in again 16 more hours. Now the second test is complete and check out the contraction between these cells. There was no space between here and now you can see right through it. And we pulled 291 amp hours, so a little bit more than the first pack, but we're still missing practically 500 watt hours, unfortunately. So let's put this pack together. Also, I was on AliExpress and I found a listing and they promise that they have grade A cells and they talk about how they match them and stuff. So I'll have a link below for that one. I'm gonna buy that one. It'll take like two or three months to get it, but hopefully that one is better than this listing. And these cells have contracted quite significantly. They are laying almost flush to each other. And this is the container that we're gonna house these batteries in. I had some cooler looking containers, but this one just fit them perfectly. So we're gonna use this. We have a 150 amp circuit breaker to isolate it from the rest of the battery bank. And I already have the first battery built inside. What a perfect fit. So now the balance cables are installed and organized and all I need to do is start the battery up. Both packs are at 0% state of charge. So when I connect them, they will cycle together. So first I'm gonna plug in this balance cable and then plug in this cable over here and we're gonna check the voltage. And both BMSs are activated so now I can turn on the circuit breaker and we're gonna measure the inrush current. So let's see what happens. All right, here we go. We had 186 amps surge through the system. Now it's at 130, but it's dropping fast. Oh, we just got a disconnect, darn it. 
So one of the BMS has just turned it off. That's because this pack is at a very low state of charge relative to the rest of my system. So I'm gonna disconnect it from the system and manually charge it with a 48 volt charger. And this is my favorite charger right now, EG4 for 48 volt banks. I run it literally 24 hours a day and it works flawlessly. So I'm gonna let this charge for like an hour and then I'll connect it to my main system. So I only had to charge for about 10 minutes and now it's under 80 amps. So now we're good. So now this battery is connected to my system and I added 15 kilowatt hours to it. So now this system has 43.6 kilowatt hours total. I can't show you guys the other batteries I'm testing right now because they haven't been released, but now I have enough power to actually charge my Tesla and run my air conditioner 24 hours a day. And this system charges with 7,000 watts of solar panels. And those produce about 35 to 40 kilowatt hours a day. So now I just need to wire up a long cable to my Tesla charger from that panel, and I should be good to go. And when it gets cold, I'm gonna run Bitcoin miners to heat up my shop. So we'll have a mini split, Bitcoin miners, and a Tesla powered off of this system, which in my opinion is super cool. I mean, isn't that amazing? And realistically, you only need to build two of those batteries to build a full size system so you have 30 kilowatt hours. And with grade A cells, that would cost about $6,000. And then these are $3,000. And then the panels are about another 2,000. So under $11,000 and you have a full sized off-grid system. And that's pretty much it for this video. I'm gonna cycle this battery and then do a capacity test in about a month. I'm gonna add its own shunt and watch how it cycles. Um, if it works well, then it works well and that's great. I'm also going to watch the swelling and contraction. I'm going to wait until it's at a high state of charge. I'm going to cut the tape a little bit on the top and then retorque the nuts on the studs. That way there's more room for expansion and contraction. But I don't want too much, just a little bit. Anyways, I hope you guys liked the video and I will talk to you soon. There's lots of other 48 volt batteries that I'm testing, but I'm still waiting until they're released and then I'll show you them. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Bye.